So right here today on our DEX is an HP EliteBook X360 1030G3 That is behaving somehow weird See the armor blinking light? So that is a problem we have with this laptop So this laptop wouldn't charge so you plug in the charger and get this amber flashing light. That's the charging light. It's supposed to stay solid amber when it is charging and then solid white when it is fully charged. But as you can see, it is flashing, flashing amber light. So we're going to crack open this HP laptop and then take measurements and read it and see what is wrong with this laptop. So join me and let's dig in. Now before I crack open this laptop, let's check the battery meter in the system tray and see what we get in the battery indicator or battery meter in the system tray. For your knowledge or your information, this laptop has been sitting on my bench for hours now. And if you can see, if you can see the battery meter. We have absolutely zero juice, no juice in this battery. As you can see, battery state of zero percent available. So let's delve in and then dissect this motherboard and see what is actually wrong with it. All things being equal, after attaching our type C charger to our type C port, our type C controller chip or IC should release. 20 volts to the source of this first P channel MOSFET in our screen here. So let me check for 20 volts on the source of this P channel MOSFET. And as you can see, we have 20 volts. Now let's look for 20 volts at the drain of this MOSFET. Check. We have 20 volts. Now let's come to our second P channel MOSFET. See how I'm tracing the line. You can see how the line moves from here to here and then now to the source of this second p channel MOSFET. let's look for 20 volts and we have 20 volts here so you should make it way to the drain of this second MOSFET as well then it's here and then makes it way to what the current sensing resistor all right so on these boards this um current boards they use a a topology of charger we call uh, topology of um, charging chip we call the NVDC that's the narrow voltage direct current charges all right so what happens over here is that the 19 volts or 20 volts from our charger moves across these two MOSFETs and then becomes available at the current sensing resistor now this current sensing resistor where the 20 volt is made is now what taking and then broken down into a smaller voltage depending on whatever machine it is um, between 7 volts to about 12 or 13 volts now that 13 volt becomes a voltage available for the system and as well as a voltage available for charging the battery and this type of topology is mainly uh, what Apple employs and now it's, it's seen in mainstream laptops okay it's seen in mainstream laptops as opposed to the um, the old topology that they use which uh, we mostly refer to as the hybrid power boost where 19 volt is found across the entire motherboard the voltage written on this battery See the voltage rating on this battery to be to be 7.7 volts so then this system will need an nvdc voltage of about 7 to 8 volts all right so the next point we need to make that measurement will be the second current sensing resistor which is somewhere here okay let's peel off this sticker and check it around here so there we are so on this resistor we need to measure about 7 volts to 8 volts 
so it will need about one volt to two volt difference in order for me to be able to charge the battery so now let's look for let's take reading on this terrain sensing resistor for the system all right so we have 8.77 volts so then now this voltage is now going to be calculated across this inductor here this inductor to what charge the battery and as you can see i'm not getting any solid or any stable reading on this inductor now let's check the battery terminals here let's check the battery terminals here so we have our main battery voltage 7.1415 which is stagnant stagnated we are not seeing any volume reading so there is something wrong over there All right, so let's look at the second pin here. After the three, four red pins, the next one is a black. What is um, sure is um, zero volts. The next one is a green. Two point nine seven volts. I'm sure this is battery detect signal. The third one should be the data line and the clock. Uh, we are reading nothing here. Let's check the other one. We are reading 3.3. Yes. So we are either missing the clock signal or the data signal. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a schematic to we don't have a schematic to this uh, motherboard. So we are going to work from experience. All right. We are going to work from experience. So. Um, our yellow pin, we have no reading. You know, we check the white pin, we have 3.3. And this is wrong. We are supposed to read something on this uh, line here. Okay. So, let's pull further. Let's look around here on this motherboard. I noticed something funny. <laughs> this is something funny. <laughs> Look at this resistor here. Look at that resistor. It seems like it has been knocked off. It has been knocked off. Okay, so let's let's check resistor from one pin. Let's take our battery battery out and our charger out. Okay, and then check resistance from the other side of that resistor. It's one of the pins where we were not getting any reading from. Okay. Um, so from this side to this side, see, see, so on that yellow pin, we weren't getting a connection. The other side of that resistor that wasn't connecting is supposed to what connect to it, All right? So we are not, we are not getting anything. Because there is a break here, there is no continuity here. So this resistor is broken, is broken off. So let's connect this resistor and then see what changes you see in our reading and then behavior of the board. Okay, so this is the resistor we replaced. This is your resistor. So let's check for 3.3 .3 at one side and then 3.3 .3 on the other side. Okay. So let's check over here. Um, the white, yeah, the white pin, we get 3.3. .3. And then the yellow one, we get 3.3. .3. And then we check here, our uh, detect. So now all the voltages are present. Now let's check on the, the charging coil. The coil responsible for charging. Um, the coil that drives the charging voltage. Okay, let's check and see. See, eight point five one. All right. So let's check the battery voltage here. Eight point two three. Eight 
it's going to the yeah so it has gone to 8.24 Right here on our screen is um, a battery connector on a similar HP computer. So try to scout for a schematic that is similar to um, the computer we are working on, just to illustrate or demonstrate um, what we are actually dealing with here. So right here on this battery connector, you have pins 1 through to pin 10. And the first two our first three pins are what our ground pin so this is the negative side of the battery and then pin four and pin five are the data lines right data line that's ec underscore system management bus underscore data one and ec underscore system management bus clock one yeah so then the next Pin, pin 5 and pin 6 are battery temperature sense and um, battery by, I think, by direction or something like that. <sighs> this is not really of much concern to us over here. And then we have pin 7, pin 7 and 8. So pin 7 and 8 happen to be our battery voltage. So this is the voltage that the charger uses to charge the battery when battery and charger is plugged or oh, this is the voltage that the battery would give to the system when battery is not connected so this is the voltage available for the system to run off when charger is not connected all right so with what we were dealing with we had a problem with the system management bus and the communication bus that's data one and data two <sniffs> clock clock and data so how this happens is that when you plug in your charger the charging chip which is at the soul or at the core of charge detects the charger through a pin on the charger called ac underscore detect so this detects the charger then gives a digital output signal to the EC that is the embedded controller to tell the system that a charger has been blocked and this even determines the wattage of charger was plugged so then these data lines here will now be communicating with the EC this is the current charge state of our battery so this current state of charge of the battery will decide will determine how much voltage we should charge the battery with or this communication lines here will report to the host or the system that um, this is the current state of this battery that's maybe 70 percent 50 percent or 30 percent so when you check your system tray with a battery icon when you see um, battery fully charged all this communication is happening real time on these lines all right so what we were dealing with here was that one of our data lines which happens to be uh, i can't tell whichever one it was because we don't have a, um, a schematic and my oscilloscope is not here with me so one of these lines was broken therefore there was no communication from this side to this side to the battery connector to detect that a battery has been attached hence the battery behaving in the way it was so what we had to do was just reattach that resistor which in so doing we lost so i had to scout for or look for a resistor elsewhere on another board to attach before we had this communication line restored and that was virtually what we did and we had a a working or a charging battery on this system now as you can see our battery charges now you can see the battery meter over there 37 percent which will increase as you can see it increased to 38 percent so it means it's even charging 
as compared to or in contrast to before it was in zero percent so now the laptop charge so it took one resistor to what bring this computer to its knees so then charge battery and now we have fixed it and as always don't forget to like comment share and subscribe because you have more of this this kind of contents coming your way on this channel thank you for watching bye